Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make these intertwining herringbone macrame earrings but with a twisted look to them. So these are the ones that I made. So you can see we have this kind of intertwining effect along the edges by making rows of macrame. But then because we're doing it opposite on the sides it gives this kind of twisted look to it. And then what I've just done as well is I've added four different sizes of beads to give it a bit of a graduated look to it as well. So it goes from wider down to a narrow kind of a point there on the end. So it's going to hang nicely as a pair of earrings. Now originally I made these earrings here to match a bracelet that I made a while back. So this is what the bracelet looks like. So you can see you get that same effect and obviously I've just chosen similar or the same colours so you can actually make this as a set. So obviously they match nicely with that effect, the twisted effect of the macrame rolls going around. But in this tutorial here I'm going to show you how to make the matching earrings. So if you want to learn then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to use for our earrings. So first of all here I have my cord. So this is a 1mm satin cord that I'm using in these three different colours. Obviously you can choose whichever colours that you want to. And you can also use a different kind of cord, just be aware that that might give you different results. And then here we have the beads that we're going to need. Now what I have is four different sizes of regular rounds and they range from a 10mm to 8, 6 and a 4mm. So that's what's going to give the graduation there by using those different sizes. And the specific ones that I'm using are some silver starters metal spacer beads. And then of course we also need our earring findings. So I'm using some earring posts and butterfly backs, but you can really use whichever kind you prefer. And then I'm using these jump rings here to attach the piece together and also to actually start the macrame with. Now I do also put the material list down in the description box below there, so feel free to check that out along with any links that you might need. But otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. And then we need to cut some lengths of our cord. So what I have here first of all is a length of my white cord of about 30 centimeters. So this is going to be the holding cord. I've just chosen the white color. You can really choose whichever one you prefer. And then we're going to need six lengths of about one meter each. And these are going to be the working cords. And as you can see, I have two of each of the colors. So then to get started, what we need to do is take one of our jump rings and we need to make sure that it's closed so that that opening there is nice and sealed so the cord can't slip through. Then I'm going to take my holding cord and then what we need to do is just put the holding cord through the jump ring there, just one end. And then bring it out to the side and just pull it down a little bit so we have a short little length there with a longer one. And then what I'm going to be doing is attaching this to my macrame board. So just to begin with here to help hold the cords in place. So I'm just going to use one of these notches and then I'm going to put the one end there with the jump ring. The jump ring I'm putting behind the board and just pull that down and I'm putting both of the cords through there. So we need to make sure the jump ring doesn't slip out. And then I bring the cords down. Now one is going to not be long enough but then the long one I'm going to bring down and put into the opposite slot on the bottom of the disc or the board rather like that. So then we now have this attached to our macrame board and then what we need to do is attach the working lengths of cord around these. So I'm just going to take one of the working cords at a time and I'm going to start with a black one. And then what I'm going to do is put both ends together so they're even because we need to find the midpoint and I grab hold of that up here. So then I'm going to take one end while I keep hold of that midpoint and put it underneath the holding cords. So we're going to focus on this part where both of them reach. So we have the short one as well. And then pull the length underneath so the middle of that working cord lays underneath the two holding cords. And then just bring it up a bit. And then I want to attach this by making a square knot. So I'm just going to bring the left length over the holding cords. And then I take the right one over that and then I lift up my holding cords to bring it underneath everything in the middle. Make sure you go under both of them. And then up through the loop on the other side. And I like to just push down where the middle of that working cord is just to make sure it stays in place. And then I pull on both the ends there to tighten it. So that's the first half of a knot. Then we need to start from the other side. But otherwise do the same thing. So bring that over. Take the opposite one over that. Underneath everything in the middle and then up through the loop. And you can see already now it's attached, we don't need to worry so much about keeping the middle there because it doesn't move around as much. And then tighten that and this is now one full square knot. So basically what we need to do is attach all of them like this. So again I'm going to take the next cord, it's going to be black 
and then I'm going to take the two blue ones in my case and then the two white ones. But I'm just going to get further down and then show you also what we need to do with the shorter length of the holding cords. So now I've attached all the working cords and like I mentioned I was just going to show you how I'm going to deal with this short end of the holding cord because what I've done is the first five working cords I've attached around both of them but then the very last working cord I've attached only around the long one so not around that short one so what I'm just going to do is bring this basically underneath and up and away just to get it out of the way and then this working cord that I've attached only around the long holding cord and then going to also push up just like the other ones to right underneath the previous one but that kind of just traps that short end in place and we're going to deal with that at the end not just now but just for now we've got it out of the way and I make sure that then the last working cord is attached around that single holding cord and now what I'm actually going to do as well is take this off of my board so I just release the holding cords there and take that end with a jump ring off of it as well because as you can see here we have this length of those holding cords the little loop where the jump ring is attached and it's kind of just loose and it sticks out way too much from these knots because we need the jump ring to sit right above those knots there so what I'm going to do is I take the long end of the holding cord and then basically I push against the knots there and then just start pulling on that and then you can see that that loop is going to pull tighter and tighter and bring the jump ring further and further down and then I'm going to pull all the way until it won't go any further because obviously then the jump ring there is kind of a stopper and it sits right at the top which is then what we're going to use to attach the piece once we're finished making it to the earring finding so just pull it down until you feel like it sits nicely and securely and then what we have here is the very beginning pattern we have all the cords attached to, attached to each other and obviously there's that little short one we just keep bringing that holding it out of the way while we're working on the rest so what I'm going to do now is swap this over to my project macrame board and keep working with it so then what we need to start doing now is use these working cords here to make our knots with and I'm basically going to be working with one color at a time so I'm going to start from the top so those are my black ones and again also we just start on one side at a time but we're going to be doing the same thing on both sides so I take these two cords first of all the top one is going to be the working cord and the bottom one is the holding cord for this row and then what we need to do is I'm holding on to my holding cord and then the working cord here I bring over first of all so over the holding cord back around and underneath to then come up through the loop there and then what we need to do is tighten this but while I'm tightening it I'm going to hold the holding cord taut and push that knot all the way up until it won't go any further so that's one half of the knot and then we need to bring the working cord underneath back around and through the loop and pull the tail through you can see we kind of get a bit of a six there but looping around the holding cord in opposite directions depending what half of the knot and then tighten that and that's now one full knot so again, the next knot we just start bringing the working cord over, back around and through and then tighten it and then we bring it under, back around and through. And basically this is building a row of knots that we're going to bring all the way down and we're then also going to add in a bead here but that's how you continue on this side. On the other side, like I said, it's the exact same thing but obviously because it's the other side it's going to be mirrored so we just basically use our hands for the opposite jobs. So again the bottom one is the holding cord, the top one then the working cord goes over, back around and through and then tighten and then we bring it under, back around and through and then you can see this row is going to build in the exact same way to the other side but just mirrored to it. So what we need to do is make the right amount of knots to then reach underneath the first bead that we're going to add in. So now I made my rows of knots on both sides here and what I've ended up with is 11 knots on either side to reach underneath the bead that I'm then going to add in. So the very first one I'm adding is the largest one. I'm going to graduate downwards so when I then bring the rows in you can see the end of the rows end perfectly underneath that bead once we're going to connect it here. 
but like I mentioned as well, if you're using a different cord, you might find that gives you slightly different results. So you might have to make more or less knots to end up in that same place underneath that bead. But then we need to use the ends of the cords here to attach these rows to the middle holding cord. Before I do that though, what we need to make sure to do is I'm just gonna take all the working cords on one side and bring them actually out over this row of knots. Now it's not too crucial if you forget, you can always kind of feed them through after, but I might as well just do it now. So it doesn't really matter what side you do that with, you can also do it on the other side. What I would just recommend is that you do it consistently on the one side here obviously, in one earring, and on the other earring you do it the opposite side, just to kind of get them to match nicely. But then I'm gonna take, first of all, the holding cords, one from either side there, so those are the ones closest to the middle in the first place. And we need to make a square knot with them around that holding cord in the middle, so the white one, to attach them. And then pull that tight, and then we make the other half of the square knot, like that. And then before I tighten that second half, because the first half you can see has kind of come a bit loose, I like to just tighten up that first half again, and then I hold it there with my fingers, so make sure it stays in place and then I tighten the second half, nice and tight. Now as you can see we have a bit of the middle holding cord kind of coming through. So what I like to do is grab hold of that and then push against that knot that we just made up against the bead. And that closes up the gap nicely and also makes the rows of knots there sit nicely around the bead. So there we go. So that's the first one. Then we need to use the other lengths also from the rows, so those are the shorter ones because those were the working cords. So just bring them down over the other black ones out to the side. And then also just make exactly the same, a square knot with them. Again around that holding cord in the middle and just right below the first one. And also this is to get the cords into position for next time that we need to use them. And you can always just double push that up again to make sure it all sits in place. So then I'm just gonna leave them straight out to the side so we can move on for the next piece. So what we're gonna do is basically move on to the next color. So again, I'm gonna take the top cords, which in my case now are the blue ones, and then you can see on one side they're coming out underneath that row and the other side they're coming out over. We'll just bring them both down, because for now we're just gonna make the rows first of all. So it's the same principle. We start out the rows in the exact same way, the top one of the two, we use as the working cord and then just when you tighten this just make sure to push it all the way in so you can always lift this row up a little bit while pushing that in and then make the other half so like that on the other side same principle obviously just like before we're swapping hands though because it's mirrored make your first knot again make sure you push that all the way in so it won't go any further right where the cords are coming out from and then we just need to make the right amount of knots here to reach below the next bead as well. So then what I've ended up making here is 13 knots on either side because then when I push up the next bead, which is the next size down, so the second largest, and I bring the rows together in the middle there, we can see that's gonna fit nicely underneath that so that when we connect them. But again, before we connect them, just like before, on this same side, I just wanna make sure that I bring the other working cords out over it, that row, but then, once we've done that, then we need to use the two holding cords, the one from either side there, to make a square knot with, to also make sure to cage in that bead, and then the other half, and again I'm going to tighten the first half first, to get it as tight as I possibly can, and then the other half, so like that, and remember, I'm going to grab hold of that middle holding cord and push the knot against the bead to kind of help straighten it out but also so it's everything is as nice and tight as possible. So there we go, now put these back out to the side and then what we have left are the new top cords at the top that we haven't used yet. So those in my case are the white ones so I'm going to bring them down and then we also need to make the rows of knots with these. So then as for these rows here what I've ended up with is 15 knots on either side because then the next size bead down I'm going to push up there and then again we can see that that fits nicely and then before attaching them remember to bring those cords out again and over 
And then we just need to attach these rows by making that square knot around the middle cord. And remember to use both these holding cords first from either side. And then also once you've made that square knot, bring the other cords down and over and make a square knot again. So we want to make sure to make two square knots between each of these beads, obviously with the separate cords. So once we then attach those white rows as well, then we still have one bead left to add. So that's this very smallest one. So you can see we're graduating from the largest one first all the way down to the smallest one last. But obviously to cage that in, we need to make some more rows on the side here. So we need to go back to the top ones and really we just continue to do the same thing. So I'll bring, in my case, the black, bring them down over. Again, work on one side at a time. And it's just repeating the exact same thing. But just make sure that we separate the cords out so you take the one that's the top one so they just got flipped around there and that will be the longest one as well that's going to be the working cord and the one that we already used before that's shorter that's going to now be the holding cord so it works out nicely and you just start making another row here again make sure you push the knots all the way up and under and like I said you can always lift it up a little bit if you need to so make your rows of knots and again the same on the other side until they're long enough to then come down and meet underneath this small bead. So for these rows here I then made 12 knots on either side to reach down below that small bead there and then obviously again made my square knots to make sure to fasten them together. So now what we need to do is go back to the top, use in my case the blue ones because we kind of need to start finishing it off now. So I'm not adding in any more beads, all we're going to do is make our rows of knots on these blue ones again but this time all they need to do is reach down below these square knots in the middle with in my case the black cord so what i've made here is nine knots with my blue cord to be able to reach underneath those black square knots and then what i've done as well is previously on the one side here we took the cords that are going out to the side and brought them out over in this case i'm not going to do that now just to give it a nice finish so i'm just making sure both of the rows of knots here go over all the cords that are coming out to the sides on both sides but then otherwise we just make another square knot around that middle cord make sure to tighten that nicely and then we can see it's the same principle as throughout but obviously we're just not adding in that bead push that up and then we just need to take the other cords of the same color and bring them down over. So we also make sure to use them. Because basically we're getting now to finishing the length of macrame off here. So another square knot. Just like that. And again, I just like to make sure I just push it up. Make sure everything is settled in place. Just like that. And then we'll bring these out to the side because then all I'm gonna do now is not make any more rows of knots like we've done on the sides. I'm literally just gonna go back to the top ones, make sure you separate them out properly. So the top one is actually the first one you bring down and just take the top one on either side and bring them down first of all. So same principle, but just without making the rows of knots and then make a square knot with these two here. Can tighten that right underneath the previous square knot in the middle, which in my case were the blue ones. And then tighten that nicely. It's just to give it a nice finish here. And then I'm also going to bring down, down the other two in the same way. So I'll just bring them down and over all the others. Because by doing this, also with the last blue one there, we're making sure that all the ends of the cards are going to end up going towards the back of the piece, which is then where we're going to finish them off. So obviously instead of having that towards the front, gives it a nicer finish. And there we go. So these last few knots here just help with that graduation, kind of make it a bit more of a point on the end. So you can see it goes from the wider with the larger bead and then it graduates nicely into a bit more of a point. So I then have my piece here and then I'm just going to flip it around to the back because like I said, that's where all the cords are coming out. And how I'm finishing off these long ones, it's the exact same one with the short one up here. So the original short holding cord that we just kind of tucked out of the way. The same thing. Now what you can do is finish them off using glue. 
if either you're using a synthetic card or you just prefer that, what you would do is just put glue around where the cards are coming out from, so around the ends, and then you would cut off the excess once it dries. But what I'm going to be doing is cut them down and singe the ends with the lighter here because I'm using a synthetic cord, I can do that and I feel like it's nice and secure and also finishes it off pretty seamlessly but again obviously this is towards the back so I'm just going to show you how I do that and it's the same like I said for all of them so I might just show you on this one up here so we have that coming out and then I'm going to take my scissors first of all cut off the excess but make sure I leave just a couple millimeters of cord where it's coming out from so something like that you can just see it there then I take my lighter and obviously be careful because it's a naked flame and it does get hot then I just use that to basically melt the end of the cord and then I like to just press it in and that really seals it in place so nothing is going to come undone by doing that and also it just makes it blend in nicely really so like I said you really just want to do that with all of the cords here and then once you've done that your main piece will be done and all that's left to do is attach your earring findings to this jump ring and obviously make the other one as well. So now I've finished both of my earrings here and attached my earring findings as well and then you can see with the result that because I made them opposite the twist look to them is actually going opposite as well. So obviously when they hang from the ear on either side it'll look nice and symmetrical. So this is what the earrings look like and then the bracelet there originally so if you want to you can easily make them to match and get a nice looking set so i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial do feel free to check out others on my channel i have loads of macrame tutorials especially so feel free to check them out but otherwise i really hope you enjoyed this one and i'll see you in the next one